Hello fellow humans and welcome back to Shitcoin Fundamentals, the channel on YouTube in which we dig through the steaming pile of shitcoins to find the gold nuggets within. And out of recent events, of course, we talk today about algorithmic stable coins and what went wrong, why and what went wrong in the Terra Luna pair and why it crashed so hard. We will make a very short video, I will try, let's see if I will manage. Of course, a disclaimer up front, this is not financial advice, always do your own research. As always, I will leave all of the sources that I use to make this video in the description down below, so use them. With this out of the way, let's start again with my whiteboard here in the back. We will of course talk again uh, in the first place about what are stable coins. Most of you already know it. It's any cryptocurrency that is packed to a fiat currency. So basically, usually it's, uh, it's US dollars. Um, and the reason for this, why you want to have this, is because it generates like a a safe haven for crypto traders. So if you just had a big trade, you want you got a lot of money out of that. You want to save it somewhere uh, safe, which is not so volatile, and then basically wait for your next trade. And that's why there are stable coins because they are less volatile. They only have the volatility of the underlying fiat, but not the one of the crypto markets. So how you achieve that? The easiest, most logical way would be, of course, to back it by the fiat. So that means, for example, most uh, uh, stable coins are packed to US dollars. That means when if you want to have one billion of your stable coin and each of the coins should be worth one US dollar, then you need some bank account where you store one billion US dollar because then you can guarantee that each of the coins can always be exchanged for one US dollars. This would be the most logical way of doing it. However, there's a lot of problems. First of all, you have to have the $1 billion. And then there's also the issue of storing them safely. And also there are regulatory issues. So it's a little bit different, difficult to, to achieve that. That's why most currencies are not doing this. Some of them do something similar to this, like for example, Tether. Uh, they have a different uh, system, but this would go uh, much too deep now. So... How are algorithmic stablecoins are doing this is a little bit different. They have no underlying bank account where the fiat is stored, but they are achieving this through support coins. Usually it's two, uh, it's two or one or two uh, support coins. In the case of the uh, Terra Luna pair, it's one, it's one stable coin and one support coin. So let's go to how theoretically it works, how it stabilizes this Terra coin. The, the stable coin of the uh, Terra Luna pair. So imagine you have your UST and more people buy it and it actually raises the price above one UST. Because if there's more people buying in, of course it will raise the price. The way how to get it back to one US dollars is of course by printing more of that coin, right? You increase the supply and that reduces the price of the coin. And this is basically also what's happening. The underlying algorithm gives the holders of Luna the possibility to sell their Luna for a small profit and buy UST. And by buying UST, new, uh, new UST is created, which of course reduces the price of UST. And that means it goes back to one US dollar. So the algorithm makes sure that goes as fast as possible and as stable as possible back to one US dollar. So what is the other situation? Of course, the other situation is that um, the Terra becomes less than one US dollar. Here also the solution is clear. You basically have to reduce supply of Terra to increase its price. This is also happening. This is uh, basically happening by, by allowing people always to buy um, Luna with UST for one US dollars. So that will be if you buy um, Luna with UST, it will be always worth one US dollar. That means people will buy in this situation Luna to make a small profit, and like this reduce the supply of UST, and the value rises and then goes back to US dollars uh, to one US dollar, and the algorithm organizes that this goes as smooth as possible back to that value. That's at least the theory. Obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, and why is that? So we can look at different uh, scenarios. So for example, one scenario could be there is what actually also happen, uh, was happening, 
there is um, we, we make first a theoretical uh, one and then we make a, a wider picture. So theoretically we say there are only these two coins available. There are no other coins in the market, right? This was the easiest way now to look at this. So what would happen like there is some kind of panic, something is happening and people want to secure their, their money. Of course in a, in a normal world uh, the Luna is more volatile uh, currency. So there is a possibility that Luna goes down, right? So you want to protect your money. If there's only these coins available, what would happen is people would basically secure their money and selling their Luna and buy UST. This automatically, of course, would reduce the price of UST, clearly. So the UST goes, price would go down because supply is, is getting higher and higher. And if nobody is buying up that additional supply, then basically the value of UST goes down. So even in a perfect world where only these two coins would exist, the UST currency would go down in this case. However, people would be until a certain point ready to take the loss, right? They're afraid. They say like, okay, if I have to sell my currency to for 80 cents on the dollar, I'm fine with this because uh, the, the possibility of losing money is here greater than when I do this. So people would do this until a certain point, but people likely would not do this until the point where UST would be worth only 10, 20 cents like it is currently. Because then at some point there is again an incentive to go the other way around because then I can exchange my 20 cent UST for uh, one euro worth of Luna. Right? So, so people would buy in actually in UST to, to get that chance. So this would basically cut the, the, the lower bound of the value of UST. However, we're not in a perfect world. There are other currencies around. What is now happening is basically this one is falling. Because of market events, people are selling it, they want to go to SEF, they want to go uh, put it back in, into fiat currency or into uh, Bitcoin or Ether or whatever, right? So they're selling it. This coin goes down. Now, of course, some of people will jump here, will say like, okay, I trust the system enough that I, put, that I uh, want to protect my money, which is in Luna, and put it to, to Terra, what people did. So they say, like, okay, here my, my money is reasonably safe. With this, the price of Terra goes down. Now here money is, is leaking out, and here the price goes down. So people start to panic also here and try to, uh, try to get out. But there is no good way anymore to get out, so they could not, like, go back here and, and uh, buy Luna, because it's just not, there is... There is no, uh, nobody who wants to actually do that trade anymore. So you have on both sides people who just want to sell. And this is the problem because all of the system basically works by keeping the amount, the liquidity of that kind of stable. However, when you have an event where in both coins liquidity is trained very fastly, there is no way that, that they can stabilize each other. Right? Here is nobody who has any interest to stabilize this anymore. Even if they could make a small amount of money, they don't care anymore because they're in panic. They say, like, okay, I just want to get my money out of the crypto market. I don't care how much do I lose. And that's exactly what happened. And then both basically, this one is falling. It has not the ability to stabilize this anymore because there are no people anymore who, who have interest in that. So this basically has no protection any, anymore against falling as well. And this is what we're happening. So this is basically, this one got in free fall and immediately after this one also got in free fall because there was no stabilization anymore. And this is the reason. And I think this is the big problem with algorithmic stable coins. They work as long as they grow. So they need basically that there is a constant influx of money or at least, at the very least, that the money is stable, that there is no, that there is no leaking out of, of funds out of these coins. Otherwise, there's no way how they, could, how they could leave this incentive structure open, right? So somewhere these small profits have to come from. And these small profits come, of course, from new users entering the market. You could now argue that this is a, a kind of a little bit Ponzi scheme uh, situation, 
And I would fully agree. I think this is the problem of these algorithmic stablecoins, that they're kind of a little bit uh, a Ponzi in, in, in the way they are, they are organized. Doesn't mean fiat currency is not uh, in the same way organized. It is actually in a very similar way organized. However, there's much more trust in the fiat market than is in the crypto market. And this is the problem. And additionally, there are so many other stable coins around, right? In, in the fiat world, you have US dollars and that's it, basically. I mean, you have the other, crypto, uh, other currencies, but US dollar is the gold of the, of the fiat market. Here you have many others, you have BUSD, you have Tether, and there are many, many other uh, currencies you can go to. You could also argue that uh, Bitcoin is kind of a stable coin in the, in the crypto universe because it's often used to trade against uh, Bitcoin. So there's a lot of options, and that means it's easy to train that. In case of panic, it's easy to train it. And this is basically uh, what happened, and then they just fail. There's nothing which can hold them back because there is no underlying value between them, despite basically the trust that people have in it and the money that they put into the project. As soon as that dries up, that's it. And this is what happens. And that's why I'm very critical about algorithmic um, stable coins. There was until now not one of them which actually worked. And I would argue this is the actually underlying nature of these coins. They, they work very good in bull markets. But as soon as a bear market hits, they, are, they are have to fail. There is no other way of these algorithmic, of these algorithmic stable coins than to fail in a bear market. And I think this is a trade that is not very wanted from a stable coin, because exactly in a bear market, you want to protect your assets and you want to do that in a safe haven like a stable coin. So basically, you build a system that actually fails in exactly the situation that you want to be protected from. And I, I think this is in general a problem. I don't have a good solution, so I think this is an open discussion also in the crypto world. If you have an idea how to solve that, please share it. Uh, we're happy to hear it, but I think it, it will be very difficult. So let's see what's happening in the future for now. If you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like to the video, of course. Also subscribe. I would be very happy. I really want to grow the community to over a thousand people. So please hit the subscribe button very heartily. And if you like so, and if you want to be informed when new videos come out, then also hit the bell. That's a bell. Sorry, very bad at drawing, as I said already before. And yeah, join also um, my community on all of my social media. Links in the description down below. And see you next time. Bye.